I am joined in studio with none other than the beautiful, clearly, you will wait and you'll say, <laughs> Wanjiku Wairia. She's a strategic advisor uh, in boards and op organization. Yes. So stay tuned for this conversation. We have so much coming your way. If you're in business, if you want to start a business, this is the conversation for you. So stay tuned. And uh, thank you very much for creating time to be with us, Miss Wunjiko. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. All right. You yes. really look nice. Oh, look who's talking. You're too <laughs> kind to me. <laughs> thank you for so, uh, starting us off because mm -hmm. you wear so many hats. Yes, I do. Um, uh, just uh, tell us who you are and what you do in details. And what I do in details, okay, who <laughs> am I? All right, let me start by work. My, on a day-to-day -day basis, the reason why I get up every morning is I'm okay. a strategic advisor. All right. So I work with leaders and organizations to equip them towards agile business transformation. So what does this entail? This entails how do you design your business? How do you think through end-to-end? -end, whether you're starting, in respect of where the curve your business is, whether you're right as a startup or right towards the end where you're wondering whether do you close it down? I mean, do you sell it out? Do you reiterate? Do you create new set of products? Do you re-energize your business? So my, my role primarily is to advise through the process. The other aspect that comes in highly is how, how you do your leadership mapping. So who do you have on your team or who do you need to get on your team mm -hmm. or who do you need to ensure is on the right seat, mm -hmm. on the right bus to mm -hmm. be able to get you to where you're going. Mm -hmm. To allow you to dream as a lot of the people around you be able then to pick up and, and do the work with you. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do for a living. Oh, right. And mm -hmm. for how long have you been doing this? Uh, well, that's not a question to ask. <laughs> so first we must, just agree. Relate. Okay, so we must agree. We must first agree. I'm oh, 21. Can we agree with my age is 21? It's loud. It's it, loud, darling. You're yeah. 21. Yeah, I'm 21. And yes. you have agreed. We have agreed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my 23rd year doing this. Uh -huh. Yes. I've Fantastic. been doing this for 23 years. Nice. Yes. When did the journey all began from? Uh, the journey bega began from the point when every single time I'd have a conversation of a, a drink or of a meal or in as i mean I, I love sports so whether i was watching a game and it always came back to that is such solid advice and i remember i'd gone for this uh Rora shows so many 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 years ago and i sat next to this very elderly gentleman at the end of the day so he asked me what do you do so of course i told him what i did then and then we talked a bit and he told me you know Wanjiko, i need you to call me on monday my business needs what you have. And of course, I had no idea. So I didn't think he was serious. Give me his number. And I said, you know, when you go, really? How bad can it get? Give the gentleman a call. And truly, that's how my journey began. He's like, I need you to sit with my team. I need to advise them. I need to help them think through them. I want you to help them create a, a, a framework for critical thinking and analyzing problems to find solutions that are practical, sustainable, and most importantly, profitable. Mm -hmm. And that's how my journey began. Okay. So from then, I've never turned back. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, take us to now your company. What does it deal with? Before we get okay. into the topic of discussion. Fantastic. So I'm, a, I'm the group chief visionary officer at uh, the Savili Group. So the Savili Group is a management company that holds three businesses. And I run one of the arms, which is a strategic business arm of it. And what we do on, on that is we provide uh, leadership training. We do also do uh, agile leadership train, uh, coaching as well. Most importantly, we also work on a transformative style of leadership that uh, ensures that the leaders that we get, the leaders that we work with, the leaders we're entrusted with, begin first and foremost to understand who they are, understand their strengths, their limitations, and most importantly, how they can leverage what they're bringing to their business over and above the skills, experience, and, um, and the visions that they have for themselves and for the business. So those are the three arms that we do and we do this across the board whether it is from what we call emerging leaders emerging leaders are the talent that an organization has that identifies and say hey when Jiko has some potential I think she can grow into one two three four all those are emerging leaders all the way to middle level managers who we say 
you've been at this for this long this is your skill set these are the opportunities how do you transition you how do we grow you all the way to c-suite to be able to able to navigate c-suite politics in the market in the boardroom most importantly how do you grow both vertically and laterally as you grow your teams how do you ensure that that gap is not mm. so big that if you are only for two days at the business halts because we can't make decisions um, the matrix is, doesn't work the way it should because we have to keep coming back to you. How do you reduce that gap? And most importantly, how do we map you outward? Okay. What more can you give? Clearly, yes. you're qualified for this conversation. <laughs> Overqualified. So Overqualified. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> guys, back at home, make sure you have your pen and paper if you're in business. So this is the conversation for you. So today, uh, we are looking at strategic entrepreneurial design yes. and how SMEs can position themselves in their different market yes. space to be successful. Successful, mm -hmm. you know, getting into our topic, what is strategic entrepreneurial design? So, strategic entrepreneurial design is all about choices. Mm -hmm. It's about every entrepreneur is a dreamer at heart. So, what is that? How do you bring that dream from something that feels like it's a cloud in the air that looks beautiful mm -hmm. to something that's down on paper? How do you map it? What is the actual vision? What is what is that thing that you see? Because visions are tangible. So what is it that you see? And ultimately, what value are you bringing? What gap are you, are you meeting? That is actually where the, it all begins. Then how are you going to do this? What is the process? So that means what's your mission? How do I get there? What is that thing that I'm going to wake up to do every day? And what, then to your objectives, what are the steps I must take in the short term, in the mid range, in the long term? Now, this is very different from a business plan because a business plan is on which addresses the first two that I talked about, which mm -hmm. is your short term to mid range. A strategic uh, vision actually ultimately is about what you want to, how do you want to, where do you want to be in your next 10, 15, 20 years and a lot of times when we talk about 10 15 20 years it looks like it's really far away but ask yourself 15 years ago where was I did I think I'd be here today at that time probably being at some point being 30 looked old mm -hmm. at some point being 40 looked old at some point being 50 looked old but when you are at that age it just you don't feel old so the thing is time really goes fast really quickly so the mapping of that and being able to put in what you need to do, the resources that you require, who you need to work with, and what are those milestones that will show you that you're on the right route. Entrepreneur design is a lot like uh, taking a drive. Mm -hmm. Before um, the airlines were, were, were lifted that we could actually start flying during COVID, a lot of us did uh, do a lot of drives. I personally did a drive to Mombasa, and it's surely, if at some point you don't seem to wonder, you know you're lost. <laughs> You've taken the wrong road or in the wrong place. So that is also, those are the other things, the milestones, the flagships on the side of the road that you'll be able to know, if I get here, I'm in the right way. And just because you're off track doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. It means that could be that, could that be what the market is requiring? Could that be what your heart is driving towards? Does it mean that you do need more resources or do the resources that you have at hand are the ones that are informing that same direction that you're taking? So when you look at it from end to end, that is actually what that strategic design will look like in an entrepreneurial journey. Okay. Yeah. It's like a map. Yes. Certainly, um, yeah, it's like a map. Yes, okay. so uh, for someone, let's say, like, put a given example for instance, someone who has been running a business for mm -hmm. like five years mm -hmm. and uh, things are not really going as they had planned. Mm -hmm. uh, because everyone, you know, they tell us have a business plan, write it down, everything, yes. objectives, yes. what you guys are all about. Yes. So, five years down the road, things are not going as I had planned, mm -hmm. nothing on the yes. back on the drawing board, yes. things are not adding up. Yes. So, what are the basic rules to design a great entrepreneur, entrepreneurial st strategy? Okay. First things first, if things are not working, is to actually acknowledge that they are not. Because it's only at that point that your mind shifts from I must get to point B to I must stop and look at my vehicle and wonder why aren't we moving. Do I have a flat? Is my, is my fuel pump leaking? Do I have enough water? So that's the first place. Come back and ask yourself, look at the three segments of your business. First and foremost, numbers don't lie. 
Are you bleeding anywhere in terms of your finances? Are you spending more than you are making? And if that is so, and it's been five years, has the economic environment changed? Has the market that you're, that you're playing in changed? Have your customers' needs changed? Has the focus of the industry you're playing in changed? What is it? Are you, do you have too many boots on the ground and probably you're not applying tech? Or are you applying too, tech, too much tech, tech with very little boots on the ground? Where is the gap in terms of your numbers? Where are you bleeding? That is one. And the moment you look at your numbers, they will always tell you which are the places that need most of your attention too. Um, your market. Before you look at your market, you must identify what the needs of the market are. Are you do go back and have a look at what are the things that you should be addressing right now? Is the need that you are addressing five years ago the same as the one you are addressing now? Uh, I like to use masks as an example. At the beginning, at the beginning of I believe that was last year, 2020. Yes, I mean, really we had all kinds of masks: basic, blue, disposable masks. But that industry, not that, I'm, not that I'm playing in it, but it's one industry that I have, I have um, studied quite a bit. And you find then cloth masks came, then face shields came, then funky face shield came. So there's so many things that are changing, but still the basics remain. Then the colors of the masks began to change, of the disposable masks. Now you have blue, you have pink, you have black, you have all kinds of masks. So if you're playing in that field and a different kind of segment are actually ap appearing, different needs are appearing. Because then I would then anticipate that the person who developed a shape face shield probably understood that this particular segment of the market would still want to be protected, but probably either they were either allergic to the disposable masks or maybe they're beautiful ladies like yourself who want to keep their their makeup in, in check at the end of the day so what are those things that are happening in your market and come back and look at your product is your product still aligned two did you jump ahead of yourself sorry that's number three did you jump ahead of yourself what are those things that you should have done then that we that you made sure that you took the right step at the right time so those are some of the things that i would look at then when you have all that information come back and ask yourself do i still want to continue with this business and this is usually the hardest part for an entrepreneur because you feel that you failed if you have to put it aside and say you know let, let me close this let me either go back into employment or let me start in something new okay. but this is what i say every time you get to that point it is a time to put your entrepreneurial brain mm -hmm. to work and ask yourself, even if I shut this, doesn't mean that I have failed. It just means that I have a whole bag of lessons that I need to apply. That's exactly what it means. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. And that brings me back uh, to my next question, which is, mm -hmm. uh, I believe when you mentioned about, you know, things uh, like changing and you have to adjust to that change brings about the strategic uh, renewal yes. whereby you have to go back and mm -hmm. look at what is not working for you mm -hmm. so what happens as still on the example that you've used on COVID-19 uh, so what happens to someone who is running a business right now and when uh, uh, he or she goes back to you know uh, her resources her you know her profits and everything else from way back a couple of years back before the global pandemic happened and their things are not adding up they're really trying so how can what would be the advice uh, for them not to just be stuck up okay I would go back and say, put your business aside for a minute, go into the internet and find out what platforms are working currently. So a good example I'd like to share is, again, one of the arms of the business that we are in, which my husband runs, is beauty and cosmetics. And for a long time, physical shops are the ones which worked. But with the pandemic, the virtual market is the one that is now thriving. So if you're not on an e-commerce platform, your business is not going to thrive, especially if you're doing if you're doing product. Now, I'm a leadership strategist, and for a long time, uh, the face-to-face -face engagements were a big deal for us, very very big deal because that's how you engage with your customers, that's how you engage with your clients, and that's how you delivered training, and that's how you delivered um, all kinds of uh, engagements for businesses. But with the pandemic, it meant a few things needed to change. One, I needed to take my coaching online 
meaning I'm available virtually and available on all platforms, where, whether it is uh, your Zoom, your go, go to meetings, irrespective of what the client met, needed, you are available on that. But it also meant that as much as I'm a seasoned trainer, I've done this for a long time, is that I needed to upskill as well and say, you know, get on to an, an ITU training and ensure that I can be able to design coursework okay. on the net and be able to deliver it on the net as I would in a classroom. So that in itself meant that I needed to upskill. Now the beauty about this COVID times is a lot of the uh, Ivy League uh, universities and a lot of the global organizations were keen to be able to upskill a lot of a lot of us in the global south and that means a lot of the coursework was free. So you'd be able to get in and get a lot of paperwork in a lot of uh, learning in, but then you had to be present at that point in time to be able to say that Wanjuka, as much as this is working for you right now, we need to go online, we need to go virtual, we need to ensure that we're also engaging with your consumers and or clients virtually. It doesn't mean that it negated the physical because there's still a big bunch of clients who were insist on being physical. So what is that thing that is changing in your market, for example? So tech is one of the things that has shifted. I'm not quite sure that we'll ever really go back to 100% uh, physical mm -hmm. because tech has, has even shown us that we can, uh, we, can be, we can be virtual even for oh, yeah. our religious engagements as well. Yes, meetings. We're yes. all doing it in a virtual exactly. space. So be quick on change just uh, accept change and uh, transition your business with what's happening I, I like to talk about mindful change okay I'd like to talk about mindful change because the question would be if you are selling groceries mm -hmm. and you do not have a grocery store how do you still reach me who still needs my fresh vegetables how mm. do you do that so mindful change so if I say I'm going to go virtual is the investment of going virtual, for example, of selling my groceries, value to the same as I the person who shop. had probably clothes or mm. maybe non-perishable okay. goods. <coughs> so oh. what can I do? Probably is to say is to send my customers a message and send them, and we now deliver at a normal fee. You don't need to come to us. Just send me a list of what you need because I have a store and my, f my food is perishable. But you know, I'm not gonna come to you because I'm afraid of, you know, I, I don't want to be in crowds mm -hmm. and I'm keeping myself safe and my family safe. Okay. So it's, I, want, I talk about mindful change. What is it that will work for you? So I've given you a, an example at the top of the line and bottom of the line. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to uh, the first time I, uh, the first person to get into you know business, mm -hmm. the first time I entrepreneur. So let's look at business goals, yeah? Yes. So how important is it for a, a business owner to determine the direction of the company and what are some of the key elements to apply to ensure that you know they stay focused mm -hmm. and uh, consistent to just get uh, to, to their targets? Okay. Business goals are, are as important as life itself. Because if you're unsure about what you want to achieve, it will be very difficult for you to know when you're getting off track. And there can be big, hairy, audacious goals, which is I want to make X amount of money within X amount of time, and I want to have reached Z amount of customers within a certain time frame. It can be big, hairy, audacious goals, or it could be you know, small, tangible goals, like I want to ensure, and that's usually what works when you're starting up. Okay. I need to have my licenses in, and I need to have all my documentation in by this time. Am I going to start in a physical space? Am I going to rent it out? Am I going to start working from home? Am I going to be selling out of the boot of my car at the beginning? Mm -hmm. And eventually, only until when I get to this level of profitability, can I then move to this kind of a space? Right. If you're getting into a consultancy, do I want to hire an office? Or do I want to go and be part of a virtual, virtual office where a place where I can have my address and everything in, and if I have business meetings, I can hire the room for an hour, three hours, and pay for that, but I still have a physical address that I can say this is where my office is. So those are the smaller, those are the much smaller goals, and it's always tied to how much revenue you want to turn around. I always say numbers don't lie. Mm -hmm. Always make sure that you, it is, whatever it is that you do is tied to a number. 
And every time you have a metric, which is a number, it makes it very easier for you to see when you're going off track or when you're going on track. The other thing is resources versus resourcefulness. I, I, I talk about this a lot because a lot of us will struggle with starting a business because I do not have the capital, I don't have the funding, uh, because I don't have uh, collateral, the mm -hmm. bank wouldn't give me money mm -hmm. to start my business. It becomes quite a bit of a challenge to get started. But this is what I always say. Resourcefulness is more important than resources. So if today, assuming you had a little one and their life depended on you getting 5,000 shillings, I believe all You'll of us will way. find a way. Yes. So that is how I say we look at our businesses. Though if, if you really truly want to go into something, and I will move away from the word passion because passion feels like it's a very fluffy word. Really? Yes. I move away from passion. You're breaking so many hearts right oh, now. Oh dear me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I'll have a few friends later <laughs> on in the day. <laughs> yes, uh -huh. move away from passion. Okay. Because um, it's, I think it's a Buddhist who say, you know, a light quickly lit that burns so brightly dims very quickly. Repeat that again. A light so quickly lit that burns so brightly is so quickly is so quickly dimmed. Mm -hmm. That's why I say move away from the word passion. Okay. Because the way we understand passion and the actual meaning of passion is very different. What's the difference? The actual meaning of passion means to suffer for. To do what? To suffer for. To suffer for? Yes. Okay. It must be something that you must be able to, you must be willing to suffer through, to suffer for, to sacrifice okay. for. Okay, to sacrifice. Yes. It's, not, it's more than sacrifice. Because you know, sacrifice means that... Um, because I needed to get here probably pretty early, that means I will sacrifice as an hour of sleep. But to suffer for, it means that I am willing to walk bare feet across town to get to the studio. You're willing to put time. in the work. I'm, wi I'm willing to suffer for it. Okay. Actual suffering. There is, you know what? You want us to stick with suffer. I want us to stick with suffer. To suffer for. That's okay. actually what uh, passion means. Passion, okay. The and well, how do we, like, uh, you know, um, define it? How would you define it is if you never understand from that business, would you still run it? Would you sell the class clothes on your back, your favorite shoes for the ladies, gentlemen for whatever you value most, whether it's a gadget uh, or a piece of land to keep that business going? Mm -hmm. would, you, uh, would you be able not to have a meal a day for a week to make sure that you can pay a supplier or you can acquire something. Okay. It, that's why I'm sticking with the word suffer for. We, we shall stick with suffer for. Yes, suffer yes. for. And th that's why I move, I, I move away from the word passion because it's, it's, it's a very, it's a very energizing word and it, it, it's, it's a very encouraging word and it's, it's not a bad thing for it to be that way. But is it sustainable? But it's that not. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, just the same way we talk about love. Love is a decision, not a feeling or an emotion. I was not ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so coming back to this, so yes. that, that, that is why I move away from, from passion. Uh -huh. I say, what is that thing that for sure, and this is what I say about business, starting a business. Okay. If you never got paid a mm -hmm. cent, would you still do run that business? Mm. Because with resourcefulness, the resources will always fall. There will always be somebody somewhere who will notice, who will see the opportunity, who will give you a chance and open a, a door for you. That's how some of the most amazing businesses, even when you read them, all the uh, business moguls locally in global, when you hear their stories, how they started their business, nobody started it with a cushy, you know, very well, Cross T's cross I's daughter's Very business true. plan. Yeah, and I remember even the CEO of K, uh, K KFC. Yes, uh, he was uh, he was denied uh, like a uh, uh, jobs that he has for more of a, a thousand plus times, exactly. but he believed with, believed in his recipe. Exactly. Yes. So I guess that's true. We have yeah. to suffer for what we want. There I you mean, have it. So as long as you are willing to, uh, what is, what's the right word? As long as you want something, you will, you will always find a way to actually get it. I yes. think that's how you sum it up. If it's important enough mm -hmm. to you, if the value is high enough for you, if you're sold out totally to it, 
the price will always seem minuscule. Okay, always. Oh, well. And now let's go back to now. Um, uh, I am in a position that I want to start a business, right? So how can a uh, how can a business uh, cover niche for for themselves? I know that uh, uh, yes, mm -hmm. in a competitive, especially in a competitive market space, mm -hmm. and. Let's let's just get to that before I ask, I ask another question. <laughs> okay. All right. Businesses that succeed are businesses that meet a need. Mm -hmm. So what is it the world needs that you can provide a solution for? That's how to cover out your niche. Not because everybody else is doing. What is it that the biz that the world needs that you can provide a solution for? This is what I know, and this has been said over and over again over the years. A, a lot of the, the business moguls have said this, that if a man can make a better mousetrap, more efficient mousetrap, than his neighbor, even if he lives in the middle of a forest, the world will make a beaten path to his door. So what is that need that you're meeting? As long as you're meeting a need in the market, you will be able to have enough customers to sustain and grow your business. The question is, where do you want to play? Do you want to play in, whenever we talk about niche, a lot of people think about, you know, top of the line, you know, very high, very high luxury products. No, that's not necessary yet. I, I, I want to look, give an example of, um, of rodents or, 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 or insects in the house. There are very many people who do fumigations, but you will find there will always be that one person who will do fumigations that will address a particular line of insects. Whereas there's somebody else who's selling a sachet downtown, actually the real downtown, not just the downtown we call downtown, a sachet for 30 bob that if you sprinkle it around your house will either kill and or repel roaches. So where do you want to play? And you must determine whether whether your product is a luxury product mm -hmm. or an everyday product. And okay. that determines also your margins, meaning an everyday product, probably your margins are low, high volume, but it means you'll probably be in business for a lot longer. And you'll find a lot of the companies look across the board. That is how the Kadogo economy has thrived in, in, uh, in, in our country and in, in the African economy. But it doesn't mean that the big bulk uh, economy is not working because there are those people who play there, they play who, who play in very big spaces, if you're talking about product, mm -hmm. service as well. Who are you targeting? And that's how to create your niche. You must identify what need are you meeting and at what level do you want to meet it. Okay. Yeah. And let's look at what are some of the mani uh, management skills that are vital for the growth of a business? Oh, that's a good one. I'll start from the basics. You must understand your management style first before you identify what um, what gaps you have. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole topic on its own. But the other thing that you also need is to be able to identify the, um, the skills that you do not have. Like I say, me, I've been in business for very long. Uh, numbers and me, uh, we're only friends when I'm getting paid and buying shoes. That means for me, my biggest expense on a normal day will probably be a resource that does my accounting pretty well and tech that supports me pretty well. Oh, right. That doesn't mean that I cannot read audited accounts. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean I don't understand my numbers, but mm -hmm. it's an area for that for me, I don't find joy in. Okay. So you must first identify what those skills are. Then the other thing is uh, also ability to network because people only buy from people they like and people they trust. So you must be able to identify what, who is your authentic self. And when you step out into the market, please let us experience you the same way every time. Mm -hmm. If this is who you are, don't try to be uh, like Kawanjiko or like somebody else because you feel if you're like that, you'll success, be succeed better. You know, networking is also another thing. The other thing is that your want is your bond, okay. which, which comes down to commitment. Every commitment you make, you must follow through. Now, commitments are driven by your values, and all of us have got different sets of values. I will not go into that because there's no one value which is better than the other. There's none which is more important than the other. But commitment is one of the most important things that you have, that when you give yourself commit that I will do this for you today, or I will deliver this by this day, please deliver it, or please do it. And if you can anticipate that you're not going to be able to call ahead of time, 
and say, I'm sorry, I committed to do one, two, three, four, because I'm for, for since circumstances, I can only be able to do this and be honest about it and be willing to be agile. Agility is the other skill that you need. Because if you're not agile in your decisions, agile in, in your processes, so don't change your goal, but be flexible about how you get there. Okay. Yes. You're right. Yeah. So as we wind up, what are a couple of uh, uh, you know uh, tips that you could give when it comes to marketing? Marketing that requires minimal resources, but it is as impactful as, as oh, well. marketing. All right. So I would say all of us, I believe, have a social social, social presence at at some level. Depending on where you what you're playing at, make sure that your that your social engagement is active. For example, if, it, if your target market is, is more the younger population, spend your time on IG and it's great to post selfies mm -hmm. that how about market your products there. Oh, Face, wow. Facebook is also another one, but mm -hmm. if you're in professional services, mm -hmm. please spend a lot, as much time as you can on LinkedIn. All right, on yes. social media. So yes. speaking of social media, how can people find you all across all social media platforms if they want to keep this conversation going? All right. Um, on LinkedIn, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. Um, my name on LinkedIn is Wanjuko Wairia on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook as well, which is Wanjiko WL, on Twitter, Wanjiko WL, IG, Wanjiko WL. All right, thank you very much, Wanjiko, for taking time to be with us thank and you. taking us through a uh, couple of strategies to hack it in this particular space or in business. Thank you very much. All right, so that is Wanjiko Wairia, who is a strategic advisor, uh, boards and organizations. So make sure you keep the conversation going. Uh, reach out to her across all our social media handles. Uh, that is Wanjiko Wairia, and uh, she will definitely respond to you at right for channel is where you can find us across all our social media handles at michelle ashira is where you can find me across all my social we'll be right back with so much more right here on in the morning